The motto for world-class competition has always been faster, higher, stronger. It's the same for Navian, makers of condensing tankless water heaters. Faster to install and set up. Higher performance and efficiency to provide endless hot water. Stronger with the industry's strongest warranty. All because of the copper-free stainless steel heat exchanger built in every unit. Learn about Navian's condensing tankless water heaters and find a Navian contractor at tanklessmadesimple.com. That's tanklessmadesimple.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm Attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's Choose the Right chapter.com. 9.9 K I S W the rock of Seattle. Over the weekend, there was a flight from Saudi Arabia to Malaysia and they had to turn that plane around because a woman on board forgot her newborn baby in the terminal at the airport. Ah! It's an Um, honest mistake. ah! How? How? I mean, granted, it's a newborn. You're not used to having a baby, maybe. And I, oh, I got to carry this. I mean, well, they always say that there's people, and as dumb as it sounds, but there are people who forget that their kid is in the baby seat in the back of their car when they go run into a store and they have to remind people, hey, don't leave your baby in your car because they're so used to not having a kid. Yeah. She left her kid in the boarding area. Still stupid. I mean, I, I don't know how people could forget their child getting onto a plane. Yeah, I, feel, I, I don't think I ever did that because just as soon as the kids were born, it was like, okay, they're here now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's right. just like my brain knows that. Especially a newborn. You think you'd be hyper-focused. But they don't know if she had other children with her, if she got distracted. Well, she did that. She definitely got distracted because well, she left her kid there. Maybe the newborn was in line to get something at Burger King. Those lines yeah. at the airport are ridiculous. That's a good point, yeah. She didn't realize until they'd already pushed back from the gate. Some reports say the plane had actually taken off before she realized the baby was missing, but the plane was probably just taxiing on the runway, we're thinking. Which, at least that's good. At least she remembered as they were taxiing. Um... It's not that bad yeah. of a parent. Usually planes will not turn around if you forget stuff at the airport. But I guess forgetting your baby, that was like, all right, we'll turn it around. Damn. Imagine being on that plane in that moment where the woman, do you, do you uh, calmly hit the, the button above you or do you just scream, my baby, I forgot my baby? Yeah, I think I'm a screamer. Yeah. Yeah. There's audio of the pilot talking to ground control, and they had to ask him to repeat himself because they, they were like, what did you just say? And then they were like, yeah, you should turn around. Sir, the A32 from dispatch. Go ahead. Uh, sir, confirm you are returning back to the gate. Allah uh, Hamdulillah, I was a bit good. Confirm reason, please. Well, look, man, a one passenger, she left her baby in the terminal and she refused to consider the flight. Okay, Roger, left her baby in the terminal. Allah Hamdulillah, you did that moment. First of all, Goodness, man, one passenger, she left baby in the terminal. Now she refused to continue the flight. What really surprises me is they spoke English. Because going from Saudi Arabia to Malaysia, I mean, I don't think either one of those places are English-speaking, like, naturally English-speaking countries. So that's cool that they were a... I guess Maybe I, they did it in a bunch of different languages, knowing that they'll get more hits on YouTube if oh, they do it. What, yeah. <laughs> give you a few different options. I really Can appreciate you repeat control. that now in yeah. Spanish? Oh, man. See, that's a new job for you. You could be the guy that does all the YouTube translations. Yes. That'd be great. You can do the voice I down. do like that. Like, we need to record this, because I cannot believe that this is happening. Yeah. It's not clear how long the flight was delayed because of it, which I would be pissed. But they return to the gate. The baby is fine. I would have been so mad. If you're the baby? No, if I'm the person on the plane going, <laughs> leave the baby there. They'll figure it out. I got to get to I gotta get to my destination. Wow. That's trippy. When person Steve obviously doesn't have kids because after days of no sleep with a newborn, you are not hyper-focused. No. Yeah, but you're not going to forget your baby. That's I'm sorry. I, mean. I can understand you, you're a little, little tired. You might forget something here and there, but... Forgetting your child while getting on a plane? Yeah. Seems a little crazy. Oh, really? And yet, poor Kevin was forgotten, and we've never really been mad at oh, those Kevin parents. Kevin was a child, not a baby. Still, that's even worse. And Kevin was a brat. I mean, it was probably so you, for the best. So you think they True. intentionally forgot Kevin? Yes. All right. Well, that was the smartest thing they ever did, because their house would have been robbed. <laughs> 
That's a good point. Kevin saved Christmas. That took me a really long time to get what you guys. Oh, you didn't know what the hell we're talking about? Home Alone. I, I got it. Home Alone, Danny. Home Alone. Home Alone. I was like, greatest Mr. Christmas movie ever. Was Kevin a member of a show? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Kevin. <laughs> One person says, "I was left at the Kingdom." It was a youth group trip. Two vans, both vans. Thought I was in one of them. My dad was in one of them too. Oh wow! I I I, I would just hang out at the Kingdom and run the bases. Dude, I was just at the I when I was at the mall. There was a uh, there was a t- a ton of kids. I think it was Factoria. Like there had to be fifty kids, and there was one person who was an adult look like, and another person went in. And I'm like, how do these kids not get lost? I mean, you think fifty little toddlers is really what they were? They yeah. couldn't have been more than five. Yeah, imagine being like those those chaperones and the pressure of making sure every kid is accounted yeah. for. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at, and I hate to say it, but all little kids look alike to me. They were all just, just like sniffling and sneezing, and I I, I could easily leave. I am a kiddist. I really am. They all. I mean, I, I could easily leave one of these little. They all wearing the same like clothes. I mean, they just. I mean, you know, I'd be like, I could easily drop one and leave one there. You should. Have, they, they should all have to wear shirts with numbers. That way, you know, or like, yeah, you know, like those little like mesh jerseys you put over your. Yes, like yeah. like when you're jogging. Yeah, so they each. Have have a number that way you know if it's in the right order. Marathon like, style. Thirty seven's missing. Yes. Where's thirty seven? <laughs> and you know, hey, who's your buddy? And you should have two buddies, and they better be the, you know, the number before and after you. Oh, this is a fun fact I did not know. English is the international language of air traffic. It's a requirement that they speak it. We get a lot of people that are saying all oh. pilots and flight controllers have to speak English. Look at us, we won. Ha ha. We won. <laughs> <laughs> we won, you say, America. Did you say we won? Yeah, we did. Aha. We won. <laughs> yeah, when everybody wants to say whatever they want to say, we won. You Bloody. do realize America has no national language, right? Shut up. This is an American moment, Vicky. Yeah, Vicky. We don't Jesus. need you in Shut your... up, Danny. Of course it's somebody who's in this country illegally that has to rain um, on parade. It's time to get her deported. Get I'm, more, her I'm more illegal than you. Oh, we don't man. know where you're from. That's a good point. Don't tell anybody. I couldn't. <laughs> Can he enjoy his victory? No. America! I love that they speak American. That's great. That's right. We won. F you, Danny. Kevin's my hero. Yeah, you New Mexican. Yeah. America won. Get out of here, you New Mexican. We're going to get you deported back to New Mexico is what we're going to do. And I'm proud to be an American. Apple pie, hot dogs, and Chevrolet. (laughs) Woo! Yeah! I'm feeling actually kind of excited about yeah. all this. I was going to say, you're jacked up on this. I am. I'm, I'm jacked up on my own jingoism. I love it. This- I am a real American. They come to America today. To be an American. They come to America today. My anthems, baby. Jesus. America! We just need some fireworks. That's what it is. Oh, they're shooting out of his butt right now. <laughs> That's, <true. laughs> That's why when it says make America great again, we are already great! Jesus. Thank you. Hey, can I, I tell you about, what? How stupid is BJ? He thinks he speaks American. It's English. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> we speak... We speak the God's language. That's why I noticed that. You are yeah. dumb. How do you think that you speak American? America. Gosh. The God's language. American. <laughs> I got to tell you about this 54-year-old guy in New Jersey. His name is Mike. Is he American? Oh, of course he is. Are you All kidding right, me? He played an American lottery. <laughs> and by the way, I'm reading this story in full-blooded American. Okay? I'm not going to translate it for anybody oh, else. Oh, boy. He hit the lottery this month for $273 million. Um, this is a dude that almost lost his ticket. I don't know if you remember this guy. Uh, he forgot it at the gas station. That's where he bought it. Then he went back there the next day, and someone had turned it into the lost and found. So he's trying to track down Damn. the person to reward him for it, because that's amazing. That's a better man than me. <laughs> wow. I, I yeah I mean I don't know if they turned it into the loss and found after it was the winner or if they just oh I found this in here somebody might have dropped it that's a good question if you knew that you just found a two hundred and seventy three million dollar lotto ticket do you say that you found it or do you say that you played it oh you know I know that someone's going to come back and say they bought it they dropped it and if they you know I feel like I just can't win that battle yeah they, surveillance they, video exactly they keep tabs on all of that stuff eventually yeah. it's yeah. going to come out and then you're going to be that douche and you're probably not going to get the money either 
<laughs> I'd give you a different answer if it was 1980s. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 1980 oh, yeah. Steve is keeping that. No, oh, me too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, but me too. 2019 Steve is, yeah. <laughs> me Big too. Big Brother's watching us at all times. So I love that he's actually tracking the person down for the reward. I think that's cool. Because that's what I would hope I would get. What would you float somebody if you found that out? If, if it was me? $273 million. You found out that somebody found that lotto ticket for you, thus if, making sure you won the money. So if I take the lump sum and it's a hundred something million dollars, let's say okay. the lump sum is a hundred something. I think I got to give him ten mil. Ten mil? Yeah, That's yeah. Bad. Give him a ten percent. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's a finder's fee. Why am I getting? I, I can't. We all agree, and Steve, we see right? your colors are coming out. We we yeah, we're all agreeing that ten percent is a good deal. D. You think he's gonna be upset if I floated him two million dollars? He wouldn't be upset, but I think he would like me. Would go, wow, the guy made one hundred seventy million. He couldn't give me ten percent. I ain't giving him ten mil, five mil max. Wow, I say two point five. Look, I'm not gonna turn down anything. You just went from five You're mil to two point five. It. Yeah, I changed my mind. We are a hell of a deal maker. Yeah, two point f- five mil. I'm feeling worse about myself just finding it for you. It's just sitting there going, "You don't deserve it." Yeah, I'll give you two point. You know what? No, here's one. Here's fifty bucks, kid. You, you know what? You, you, I, I, I think two point five million is plenty. Look, it's a good amount of money. Up a piece of paper and handing it something that wasn't his in the first place. I go percentage. I mean, I just go percentage and feel like that ten mil is is, is the sweet spot. I don't know why ten mil just seems to be the sweet spot for me. Okay. If I won three, if I now if I mil? went if I got two hundred million, I think I gave him twenty mil. Because that will change his life. That'll really... 2.5 mil is going to change his life as well. Look, it's not bad. 5 million is not bad. But 20 million would actually... He wouldn't have to work ever again. But now you're giving him 20 million? Well, I mean, if I won 200 million. 10 million will change his life. 20 oh. million will change his life. Um, 2.5 million will change his life. We just saw a study. I said since like $19,000 is a life-changing amount of money for people. You are just trying to justify... Now you want to give him $19,000. I'll give him 20. We'll round it up to the <laughs> to 20 grand. He went from 2 million uh-huh. to 20,000. This poor bastard's lucky. It's like, this bastard, he's far from poor if I'm giving him $20,000. Hey, let me ask you this. If, he's, if you guys are negotiating this at a Dunkin' Donuts, will you at least get him a coffee? If he's at a Starbucks, will you get him one of those vanilla scones? Will you do anything like that? Someone says I'm with Steve, 2.5 mil. No, you're not with Steve. He's now at 20,000. No, I'll keep it at 2.5 mil. Oh, you went back up? Yeah. I'm looking at your face. You are not going back up. Yeah, I would. You're 20. If you I know, was just bringing up the thing that people think the $20,000 is a life changing amount of money. So 2.5 million, that's a game changer. That's awesome. So 20,000 is all it would take to change somebody's life? They, they, yeah, yeah. I keep hearing stories like that, Steve, and it's really amazing that they talk about, well, you know, the, the, like the, the redistributing the wealth and making, and then what people want, I always hear is such a f- small amount that I feel like if we could give everybody $20,000, like I think Bill Gates could do that. Could he do that? Oh, yeah. I don't even know if he can, but he can. Yeah. I got the Warren Buffetts or the Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos could give everybody $20,000 or at least the people that worked in their company. If that could change their life, that would be awesome if that's all it would take. So he says, I'm with BJ. You didn't have that money before you wanted it, before you won it, so why not spread the wealth? Another person says, Steve would take him out to dinner, but only order on the dollar menu. <laughs> you get a lot of good stuff on the dollar menu. It's true. Yeah. Here's the story, though. The big part of this story is not that he's going to find the person and give them a reward and how much it's going to be. The big part of the story is that he tried to get back together with his ex-wife. And um, she just did an interview saying, I don't care. I will never get back with him, even though he's point two hundred seventy three mil. Damn. He's a jerk. They just got divorced this past October. 15 years of marriage. And she's like, no. Nah. She made all the money. He was a stay-at-home dad. Um, so she's hoping he'll do the right thing and toss money her way, especially since she gave him a lot of money in the divorce, and she's Ooh. still paying alimony. Yeah. Apparently, Ooh. he says, yeah, she called me, and she says she's taking me back to court. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I don't know if he wants to get back with her, but she was like, I will never take him back. What do you do? Do you think you gotta, he's got to pay her some cash if she basically made all the money? In the relationship, and he's and she's paying him alimony. Do you think I would give her money? How much? Twenty thousand? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Who gets more money? The, the guy that gave me the card. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. For, for, the yeah. lotto ticket. Someone says uh, Steve's the only one being honest. I'm Another not being says, honest. That's what I would do. Someone says I'm worse than Steve. I was thinking a hundred grand. Yeah. Look, Another I think that now we know why Steve's wrestling persona is the bad guy. Steve yeah. is a d bag. Ha ha. <laughs> I am being honest. I, 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 and it may not be the smart thing to do, but I feel like I'd have to if I give have to give ten percent of what I want if somebody found the damn thing. I think that's reasonable. Someone says, "Migs, you tip your bartender and waiter more than ten percent, and all they do is hand you stuff." But I'm not tipping them on a two hundred million dollar ticket. Yeah. All right. What about you, Vicky? How much are you giving? See, 
I want to see. I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think because I have a big family, so I'm going to have to give to every single one of my cousins. I'm the oldest out of 17. Mm. Oh, you're going to have to give to everybody? Is that the rule? Like, I'm like, they would definitely look bad upon me if I don't. Especially if you give some stranger 10 million. Right. Yeah, right. So I, that was the ones that found the ticket. They wouldn't have anything to give anybody, but not for that person. I'd give them at least five. Mm. Five mil. Five mil. Okay. Five Danny. dollars. Five mil was the the initial number that came into my mind when we were huh? talking about this. Yeah. Rev, how about you? Uh, it's like you said, ten percent. Yeah. It's a finder's fee. I'm cool with it. I mean, my I, I, the, most agents charge you ten percent. Maybe He's that's not my he, agent. He's some he, random person that was just helping people from littering. He's your lotto fairy at this yeah, point. Yeah, he's your agent of good fortune. Cause yeah. He could, he could have ripped it up. He could have thrown it away, figuring, ah, you know, it's probably, who cares? You but know. he didn't. Like, more yeah, he than, didn't, so he should get something. The yeah, more I'm thinking of it. $2.5 million, that's plenty. Uh, no, at this uh, point, because he get, he got you all of those millions of dollars, you essentially have to be a sugar daddy, Steve. Yeah. Someone says, you wouldn't have any of that money without the dude. Give him half. 50 mil is fine for me. Mm. Oh, I wouldn't give him half. Someone says, I'm not giving him half. Yes. I wouldn't give him a dime. Okay, then there's that guy. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Two we, types of people. Humans, ladies and gentlemen. We are a fine breed, aren't we? I got to talk about this guy who's giving up everything for Lent. As you know, that yeah, we're in the Lent, Lenten season. He's giving up everything for Lent, except for beer. And he's not joking. You're going to hear from him at 817 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's this dude in Ohio who's giving up everything for Lent. That's a thing if you, you don't know about the Catholic season. After Fat Tuesday, after Mardi Gras, then you got to pretty much uh, give something up and not have it yeah. until after Easter. I'm glad. Like, I, I remember growing up as a kid, that was such a big thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, what are you giving up for Lent? And you would like almost kind of force yourself to come up with things. And it was just because I was like, oh, I'm giving up Brussels sprouts or something stupid, you know? Yeah. Because I just... I don't want to give up anything. Nope. Right. Yeah, or I, they, you'd make excuses like, oh, I'm giving up candy. And then you, I had like a Ferrero Rocher. It doesn't count. It's more like a cookie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm allowed to have this. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm so happy I'm not doing that anymore. I never yeah. liked this Lenten season. No. Yeah, no. I, and some people take it very seriously. It needs to let you know. And they're, yeah. it's a big deal. I mean, look, I'm glad it's okay for you. But it's like, all right, if you're doing it, that's cool. There was one time when my mom didn't want to give up chocolate. And I was giving her a bunch of crap about it. So she's like, no, I'm going to go to church every day. And I was like, oh, you can go to church? You could do something instead? So we went to church every day. So that way I didn't have to give up Coke anymore. Because that was always my thing is I'm going to give up Coke when I was a kid. Wow. Yeah. Instead, you went to church every day. Yeah, every day. I feel feel like I would rather give up something. It didn't bother me. I remember what was it was called CCD. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, like the, yeah. Catechism. Okay, yeah. It was like yeah. there the was more school after school. Yeah. You don't learn about the Bible and things like that. And then yeah. that was a big deal. I never got in trouble because I was like, I'm not a quitter. I'm not giving up anything. And the teacher was pissed. Oh, that's a good attitude. I love that. Yeah. I'm not a quitter. I should have been using that one. It didn't work, BJ. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So this guy's giving up everything except one thing. He is not going to give up beer, but he says he's giving up everything else. Everything. Yeah, except beer. So he's really going hardcore. Uh, and he's not doing this as a joke. He doesn't want to do this to get drunk either. He's an army veteran. He works at a craft brewing company. And he was inspired by monks in the 1600s who only drank a certain kind of beer for Lent. And uh, he's explaining the whole thing. I'm going to have all styles of beer. I am. Like I said, I am nervous. I'm, I'm very nervous about it. I've never, like I said, I've only fasted for for four days. That would be their liquid bread. And that's what they call it. So the monks in Bavaria called this, they would call it Doppelbach liquid bread. And basically it would sustain them through 46. Six days of Lent. They think I'm crazy. I'm an Army veteran, so you know I was I was number one in my class in the Army. Um, I, I've ran a full marathon before, 26.2 miles. I've done like you know big challenges, but this seems very daunting. Um, so I'm just curious if I can if I'm up to the challenge, if I'm if I'm going to be able to do it or not. Well, they say you need liquids, and we know you can gain weight from having too much beer. Yeah. So liquid I, bread. Liquid bread. I, it makes a lot of sense now that they talk about it that way. You think that's why maybe monks were so quiet? They were just so hammered. They didn't know how to talk at that point. <laughs> I think you're right, dude. You know how you can get so drunk, you just can't speak. And you wear those robes so no one knows if you really soiled yourself because you're going to be, you got so many robes about. Yeah. I didn't know we were going from that one yeah, extreme. Why do you got to go there? Well, I'm just saying, there's a lot of reasons. Is that what happens to you when you get drunk? Uh, when I have my monk robes on, yeah. Oh. Well, I'm just so saying, they're quiet, stuff. they're hammered, they don't move. You know, if they're not moving, they're doing their meditation. Where are they, when are they going to the bathroom? Clearly in their robes. Yeah. Clearly in their robes. Wow. 
So that's what they did in the 1600s, and this guy's going to try to do the same thing. Yeah, I couldn't do that. Yeah, liquid diet. My 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 wife has been fasting like on a water fast, like three days a week. Mm-hmm. But that's only. Th- I mean, then she gets to eat at least. That's he's right. talking forty something straight days. I'd like to hear from this guy at day thirty and yeah. see how he's doing. Yeah, day thirty is the right time. Yeah. See, hey man, are you still uh, want your liquid bread, or you need a little bit more? Be interested to see if he's still doing it. I think he's going. I don't know. I don't, I don't foresee him going. Oh, he likes to brag about how awesome he is. He'll probably pull it off. Yeah, he is a bit of a humble bragger, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I did that full marathon, not the 13. Right. I did the 26. I was first in my class. Yeah. Just, you know, best best ever. Oh, we're hating on this guy for being smart and active. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> You're absolutely right. He's smart and active, and you know what? And he's challenging this himself. This guy sucks. And he's actually, uh, you know, if he's not trying to get drunk, giving up everything for Lent is pretty amazing. I mean, because usually you give up one thing. <laughs> Holy F, that Lent beer guy, idiot. First place in my army class, WTF. Okay, I'm glad that we're not the only ones. Yeah, there. we're not the only ones. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're, we're like true we're like true humans we're hating on him because he's done stuff someone says my friend gave up beer for Lent after a week or so we see him he's drinking beer we call him out on it and he explains it's not beer it's malt liquor yeah. Mickey's yeah okay see when you're doing that yeah yeah I gave up um, I gave up Catholicism for Lent because it was supposed to be something important so. oh there you go yeah so it really worked out well for me ever since I have to say it was the best Lent I ever had alright we got a new survey uh, apparently money is not one of the top 10 keys to happiness. At least they say not directly. Yeah, I was going to say, come on, money makes uh, money takes away a lot of ills. Yeah, I always know people that money can't buy happiness. I like to just see if it can. Uh-huh. I mean, give me a couple million. I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. I, you know, I don't know if it can buy happiness. It's not going to cure depression, I get it, but it's going to make me do some cool stuff, which will make me happy. What I've heard from people that have a lot of money, and I've said, okay, so well, tell me what's up, and they go, look. It, and they all say the same thing. Money doesn't buy happiness, but it takes away some of the problems in life, mm-hmm. which, of course, you know, would make things stressful and can basically take away from any possibility of happiness. So they say that. And apparently the number one thing, and I disagree with this, spending quality time with your family was the number one key to happiness. Have they met my family? (laughs) I think they could say the same about you. What are you talking about? I'm a delight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (sighs) Wow, that was loud. I just spent six six days with you in Vegas. Yeah, and it was the best days of your life. How happy were you during those days? Oh, she was joy. She was just full of joy. I like the videos because she just had like a bottle full of whiskey with her at all times. And I was like, yeah. "Yeah." So you just got drunk the entire time you were with BJ? Most of the time, yes. Dude, I didn't take that personally, but it was the most ghetto setup that I've ever seen that Vicky had. Look. I didn't want to. I bought the bottle here in Washington. I didn't want to bring the glass with me. You brought a bottle of whiskey with you? My friend told me if you wanted to buy a bottle in Vegas, it's expensive. I've never really experienced Vegas. So she's like, buy a bottle now. Okay, you're the expert. So I put it in a plastic bottle so it wouldn't weigh down in my bag. So you put a bottle of yeah, whiskey did. in a plastic bottle in your bag. Yeah, so that way you have did. to check it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you checked it then the, yeah. as opposed to having to go to the machine. Yeah. Saved me money. Dude, it was the most ghetto situation ever. That's pretty funny. And she pulled out you. this two yeah. liter, pulls out this liter bottle, whatever it is, and she's I'm just like Vicky. I wonder what the TSA people when they went through your bag thought that was. Yeah. Like what is this yeah. liquid and Yeah. There's her bottle. That was the bottle you put yeah. it in? Yeah. Good on you. I mean, I am I mean, it's better than like a shampoo bottle. Right. I took it personally. Because it was like every time I sat at a table, Vicky pulled out her bottle and just started getting hammered. Look at this whole, I mean, what kind of, like, the yeah, hotel you're at looks kind of like, like B minus level. So her and her <laughs> and ghetto is, bottle, I think it fits in just fine. And this is at the end of the night. Like, we are literally the last people at this convention. Nobody else is there. And I busted it out. I'm like, nope, this is happening. Yeah, dude, the place is empty. Yeah, well, that's because we were the last piece. Of it had closed down by 3 o'clock Sunday. That was probably like 10 p.m. Sunday. Night. No, this was more like midnight. Oh, well, it's even better. Oh, they must have hated you guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, 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 a couple people came in, but it wasn't like they they, they, they could have kicked us out or they could have started breaking down the place. But, every, you know, the cooler hotels know that when you have a gaming convention, there are people like mm-hmm. us that want to stay in game forever. It's going to go hardcore. Yeah. So, and they did a great job. I, 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 I'm not going to say their name now because you said it looked like a dump. So I'm going to wait maybe later and give my bad. Because they were, they did a great job. For they one of the best cons I've ever been to. Was how I, uh, everything was perfect. I'm not saying the con people were doing a bad job, but it didn't look like anything fancy of a. Well, you don't need anything fancy. You just need tables and chairs. Oh, fine. I mean, it's Vegas. Yeah. Everything's supposed yeah. to look glitzy and fancy. Yeah. The tables could have been a little better, but that's all right. I mean, it wasn't horrible though. 
I won't mention the name now. So he says, uh, they say money can't buy happiness, but I've never seen anybody cry in a Ferrari. Yeah. Yeah. Number one, spending quality time with your family. That is what will buy you happiness. Number two, I think Vicky can appreciate this one. And to the point where she is did, it whiskey? No, it wasn't whiskey. And I have to tell you what Vicky did. Tamales, is, tamales, not Shout on the list. Augustine, let me see if there's any mom, tamales. Delicious food is number seven on the list. So Augustine, Yay. there you go, buddy. Appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> Uh, especially if it's good for you. Uh, the, uh, tomatoes tomatoes are, are healthy, yes. Super yeah. good for us, yeah. Yep. A, lot of good vi- a lot of good vitamins in them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're saying number nine is eating healthy will actually make you happy. Mm-hmm. I guess that's true. Feel good after you eat. Yeah, or just not feeling crappy after you eat is the key. Because I've been noticing that in my life. If I, if I go off the rails and have something that's really not, my body does actually notice it. Well, yeah, I have a buddy that's like big into fitness, and uh, he's just recently doing some kind of Jay Ferrugia, and he's doing some kind of a different way of eating right now. And he was just talking about how you know he's forty four years old, and he's never hasn't felt this good, and his uh, his body hasn't felt this good in forever. It's like the inflammation things have gone down. And it's all because of what he's eating. All these different types of foods contribute to the inflammation in your body and, yeah. and how your body feels. Yeah, so I can see that, and it sucks, man, because we didn't have to worry about that when we were like in our teens and twenties. Didn't have to worry about that. Inflammation, whatever, eat healthy. The body would just take care of everything. And now, no. But here's the number two thing to make you happy. Again, it's not money. And Vicky definitely did this. And she did. <laughs> did I do it under the table? Yeah, you did. Footsies? What? <laughs> you say footsies? Dude, Vicky, uh, sometimes I swear, Vicky is like a child. I mean, she's tiny like a child. And sometimes you feel like you're with a toddler. So we're we're gaming. And Vicky it's midnight. Had, and it's midnight. And, and Vicky stays, is staying at a condo with a lot of the folks. So she couldn't, you know, she, didn't, she couldn't just go to a room in the hotel. So she, she took a nap under the table. She took, she needed time to herself. So yep. she just basically made a fort for herself under the table. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. I put my backpack there. I had, a, you know, who? Hulu playing on my iPad. And I was like, don't talk to me. Yeah. You have earbuds in? No, it was very quiet, though. And you can't hear anything over BJ screaming anything. That's anyway, a good point. So. But she did. I thought she left. I said, guys, what happened to Vicky? And she's under the table. And she was under the table. And I'm like, <laughs> And I was waiting for pizza. They had ordered pizza. So did you tell the delivery driver to deliver it under the table? I should have. And here's the thing. It, I've been the greatest instructions ever. Deliver it under the table. Bring it to table 16 at this hotel under the table. And, you know, because of because, because Vicky's short, it does look like a little kid is just under the table. And she does post up like a little kid. Like, she goes into little kid mode. And it was kind of adorable, but it was like, wait, is that Vicky? And then it's like, you could definitely go, ah, but she looks like a little kid. No, And that's what kids do. I'm sure that's not the weirdest thing people have seen in Vegas. I'm sure. totally fine. And definitely not the weirdest thing that's happened under a table in Vegas. Agreed. Yeah, people are really upset that, what, that's what happened under the table? You're giving us a bad name. Come on, do more. <laughs> There were there no empty tables that you could go into one of those tables? I mean, nobody else was there. It was towards the end of the night, and I was like, screw it, I'm not moving. She wanted to be near us. And were like, you afraid were all, that their feet are going to touch no, you? No, they were on one side of the table, and I was on the other side of the table. It's a <laughs> long table. Oh, okay. And she can scrunch up. I mean, yeah. Yeah, she's tiny. That didn't stop me from kicking her iPad accidentally. Yeah. Rude. Like, Thanks, I said accidentally. <laughs> All right, number four on this list of how you can make yourself super happy, and it's not money, and that would be spending time out uh, with your friends. All right. Yeah, uh, yeah I do that. So basically... Uh, it seems to be a no-brainer. I yeah. Mean, who hangs out with their friends to be miserable? Yeah. And they're all about free, actually having more free time. It's nothing, it's nothing about work, which for a lot of people, actually, working does make them happy, but not me. Being outdoors more? Nah, I don't know. I suppose. They say it does work for you, but... Yeah, your idea of an outdoor hike is going to the Bellevue Mall. Yeah. And walking up the stairs as opposed to taking the escalator. It's a hell of a mall. And it's you know quite what? the hike. I'm hiking, buddy. How about this? Um, sleeping well. And I want to bring up something that I had never seen before in a con. But a, a small woman sleeping under a table. <laughs> okay, the second thing that I haven't seen before in a con. Uh, they had it in their they had it in their brochure. Sometimes gamers and have been known for maybe not having the best hygiene. Yes, and I've seen I, those Reddit threads. And man, these guys addressed it. I was really surprised. Would they hand everyone soap, deodorant? Uh, they they put in the manual. They said we want everyone to follow. We would we suggest everybody follow the six two one rule because gamers when they go to a con will just game game game. Then they get miserable. Then they you know because they're hungry, they're sleepy, and so they're like, you should get six hours of sleep. Two meals a day and one shower a day. They actually put that in the brochure. Good. 
Bro, how sad is it that they have to put that in the brochure to remind people? Hey, don't forget, smelly people. Take a shower That's before you come back thinking. to our hotel conference room. Man, I, you joke, but it gets funky. Which is, I, I had never, I've never seen anybody put that in their brochure or even say you should do this. And I think that's actually pretty cool. So what's the rationale behind somebody who decides not to take a shower before going back to play board games? It's not uh, to go back to play board games. It's to, they never leave. Yeah, they never oh. leave. So you're hanging out for, like, like seriously. Seriously, like 12 to yeah. 18 hours. Swamp ass is big. Yeah, and you're just going there and you're possibly a bachelor type nerd who uh, yeah. will, you know, just uh, pass gas and do anything in the, the yeah. area because it's just what you're doing. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to break that stigma when everyone is smelling like funk. Yeah, oh, this sounds like a real party to be at. I'm never playing board games again. Well, that's the, better, Danny. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is better now. Yeah, the, it's it's the Mostly. it's really it's really the it's really the minority that ruined it for the majority. Most people are pretty cool, especially since you got more and more women showing up to How's these the things. ass crack now. Are they still a lot of people showing ass crack? Yeah, once in a while you'll still see an old schooler. Yeah, yeah it still shows up. I yeah. did see some butt crack. It was awesome. Yeah. Nice. And I don't understand how that happens. I mean, I don't know how you typically not, their pants are lower than where they should be. Well, I do. <laughs> Thanks for that there, Dr. Science. Appreciate that. Well, yesterday, Steve, he did get this one right. Oh. What casino device is known as a fruit machine in the UK? I don't know. A slot? Yes. Wow. You, you didn't seem like you get that right. But I did. <laughs> Thanks, because I missed it. You just made me... Thanks, Dr. Science. You made me blow my nose here. Well, when you blow your nose, that's when I say dingleberry. 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 Somebody texted saying, hey, could you guys give me a shout out to let me know that the show is live? Just say Dingleberry. <laughs> I was just killing time while you blew your nose. Yeah. I got news for you. If nobody can tell if we're live or not, does that mean we're not that good or it doesn't matter? You know what I mean? Well, I mean, and sometimes you don't know if it's a live show or not because you just had a couple of days of best ofs. I think it's a very valid question. No, I'm Stop sh- being such a Dingleberry. No, 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 no. Hey, dude. Ooh, no. that's twice. No, I'm not picking on him. I'm picking on us. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If they just tuned in. No, I'm not. Again, I'm not picking on him. I'm saying, Jesus, why do you think I'm picking on the guy? I'm not saying that. Well, but yeah. I'm, I'm defending us as well. No, I don't think you should defend us. We are indefensible. Okay. Yeah. All right. Dingleberry. <laughs> hey, that's three. That's three. Dingle. We're live. Okay, Dingle. anyway. Thank you. Uh, you want to play say Dingle? You say Berry. Okay. Dingle. Jesus. Berry. Dingle. Berry. Are you, I'm not, no. Are you done blowing your nose? <laughs> I was done about four dingles ago. <laughs> All right. Uh, you want a shot at beating Steve? Yeah, you got it. All right. You can, you can, and when you win, you get to kick Steve in the dingleberry. How about that? Great. 206 421 Rock. We're playing Beat Migs at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener How long is a bankruptcy going to affect my credit rating? Of course, most of the time, by the time we're, we're talking about filing a bankruptcy, the credit has already taken a huge hit. Uh, chapter 7 is going to affect it more negatively than Chapter 13. Uh, chapter 7 stays on your credit report for 10 years from the time you file. It usually takes 7 or 8 years for your credit scores to get back into the normal range in a Chapter 7 case. However, your credit will start to recover even in Chapter 7 after about a year. Um, you'll be able to get credit again right away, usually before uh, your case is even over. Uh, chapter 13 stays on your credit report for seven years and usually takes about three, three and a half years for your credit to get back in the normal range. So chapter 13 uh, will mean your credit gets better much more rapidly. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Erin Ryan, political commentator, comedy writer, and host of Crooked Media's Hysteria. And I'm co-host Alyssa Mastromonaco, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff for President Obama. Each week on Hysteria, we are joined by a team of hilariously opinionated ladies to discuss the headlines from the serious to the absurd. We cover everything from reproductive rights to rom-coms and break down the political news of the week and cultural stories that affect women's lives. New episodes of Hysteria drop every Thursday. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.